This is your marketplace. Why does this $11 pizza cost $26 on a food delivery app? That's a big difference that I didn't know. Hidden markups. How much is it in the restaurant? $9.99. Wow. And what else are you buying into? They were asking you about the food and the delivery. It's like I'm not even a person. Love to eat, love to save money. You're going to hate what we dig up. Battle of the Food Delivery Apps on your marketplace. Why don't you ready, guys? Let's go. Restaurants are an $80 billion business. And taking a significant bite out of that are food delivery apps. So which is the best, the fastest, the cheapest? Which food delivery apps do you guys use? I use Kip the Dishes. Fedora. Uber Eats. Fedora. I use Uber Eats, so that's what I'm all about. Most of us don't know because we only really use one app. So you use? Skip the Dishes. And how often do you use it? Uh, about once a week. Once a week? Yeah. Why, why do you use it? Just convenience. I think sometimes you're at home and you don't want to cook a meal. Skip the Dishes is easy, it's quick. Oh, really? Marketplace puts the biggest food apps to the test. Here we go. We recruit a team of foodies. Edit. I run a site called Black Foodie. Hubert. I run a food blog called Good Food Toronto. Steph. I have my own blog called Candy Complex. Social media influencers to test Uber Eats, Fedora. Nailed it. And skip the dishes. And behind every good tester is a marketplace record keeper. Boom. <laughs> Ready? All right, welcome to Battle of the Apps. Are you guys hungry? Very yes. hungry. Yes. That's what I like to hear. So here's what you guys are doing. You are ordering the same meal from the same restaurant at the exact same time. When the food arrives, take a bite. We want you to score the delivery time, the presentation, the price, and whether they got it all right. You heard right. From the same 10 restaurants, the same 10 meals, from these three apps. That's a total of 30 orders. Grab those phones, fire up those apps. All at the same time. So I'm ordering the margarita pizza. I'm so hungry. And we throw in a $4 tip. Now we're going to be using the Skip the Dish app to get a breakfast routine. All right, so I'm looking up South Street Burger on Uber. Come on, Fedora, you can do this. It's lunchtime. In three, two, one, place your order. And our test begins. So I'm looking for the breakfast poutine. It's the best time to eat poutine. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the spaghetti. Oh, I really want to add hot chili. Uh, I'm looking for the spicy salmon. We're about 30 minutes into our test. We've got our first order in. Let's see who it is. Oh, is it going to be Ready? I hope it's my. Hi, how are you? Yeah. Thank you very much. Uber Ready Eats. Yes. All right, let's see what beat we have. You, beat you. <laughs> Uber Eats delivers. It looks and feels like the typical burger from Burgers Priest. OK, you like how it looks, but how does it taste? How does it taste? I think it's time to test it out. That's a big bite. It's great. And before I do anything, of course, I need to take a picture of this. <laughs> <laughs> For your Instagram. Of course. Who will be next? Yeah, it's been over 20 minutes. Skip or Fedora? Fedora, come on out. We've got a delivery. Hi. Who do we have here? Oh, damn. Thank you very much. Uber Eats. It's Uber Eats again. And Fedora right behind. Fedora. Uber Eats. We got pizza. Fedora. Pico. Where's my food? <laughs> this looks really nice. And it looks like she doesn't have a burger yet, so I feel really bad that I'm eating the pizza next. How do you feel looking over there and seeing him with the pizza? Envy. That's, that's the best thing I can say. Like, I feel envious. He's got two options already. That's two for Uber Eats. All right, Burger Priest, let's see what you got. It's pretty clean. I'm impressed, because I was expecting it to be really greasy. One for Fedora, and nothing from Skip. 
Okay, so my first order is still, it still hasn't reached the restaurant. And while she waits, now Hubert's taking a bite out of his fourth meal. I'm gonna try the pasta right now. All right, so it has been about 50 minutes since we placed the first order. Yeah. We've got nothing here. What's going on? I really don't have anything. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Yep. In our test, Skip's the slowest. Ooh. Oh, you got I a think call. That's, I think, I think that's got an order. Hi. Oh, please oh, let there finally. be food. Skip the dishes. Yes. OK, you I'm ready to eat. You got the first meal. Out of the 10 orders on Skip, nearly half take 45 minutes or longer, two of them over an hour. If I'm really hungry, I need it to come fast. And ordering in from any app, you may want to lower your expectations. You post your delivery fails. What do you think? I don't think I would order a burger on this app again. We've got some of our own, too. They taste better at the restaurant, so um, that's one thing I was kind of disappointed about. Nearly half our meals don't look too great. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's a bit squished. Restaurant owners tell us delivery means sometimes you sacrifice quality for convenience. The crust is really dry. And time to break down the costs. Bet you want to know who's the cheapest. Not so fast. We discover our bills aren't quite adding up. Back on the street, we break those bills down. You were just in Burger's Priest? Yep. To show you what we found. What did you have? I had the double bacon cheeseburger. And how was it? Amazing. Amazing? Yeah, it was really good. So do me a favor and look up that bacon oh. double cheeseburger on Skip the Dishes. Oh. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much is that? It's $11.99. $11.99 on the app. And how much is it in the restaurant? $9.99. Wow. Yeah. Why? Yeah, well, what's the deal with that? Why is it like that? Some shocked. Wow, OK. I didn't know, actually. What do you think about that? I would say keep the same price as the menu. You can just change it. It's a bit of a sham, like. Just it's why is it any different in price when they're already getting paid more to deliver? Some of you don't seem bothered by the hidden markup. I don't care. It's for the convenience. Or they're just charging us for our laziness. <laughs> I'm willing to spend an extra two bucks if it comes straight to me, so. Now, do you realize that's an extra two bucks on top of any delivery fees or service fees that you may be paying? No, I have no idea. Um, I would be curious to see how they justify that cost. I think it's unfair. Why would you charge me an additional cost on top of having to pay for delivery? So who gets the extra money, though? Does this restaurant get it, or does the app get it? Good question. We want to know, too. So Hubert helps us investigate. OK, so we're at Little India right now on Queen Street. So we're inside Tobinboku, and we're going to check the price on the veggie miso ramen. Turns out, Burger's Priest isn't the only restaurant with hidden markups. It's $13.45 picked up from the store. On each of the apps, it was $1.50 more. Chicken tikka masala is $16.95 on the Foodora app. So same as Uber Eats, it's $1 more. So the margarita pizza is $10. And we're going to compare it to the apps and see what the, the price difference is. That pizza, 10 bucks. Hubert's in-store total with tax, $11.30. That same pizza on the apps, listed for $12. Two bucks more, but you wouldn't know it. Throw on delivery fees, tip, and taxes. Now you're paying double. That's a big difference that I didn't know. Not all restaurants mark up their prices, but we had no trouble finding ones that do. We call all 10 restaurants in our demo to ask, why the markup? Little India takes a big step. Co-owner Sri Salvarasa is nervous. He doesn't want to get booted off the apps, but feels it's important customers know the true costs of delivery apps. We found that in your restaurant and some others, food costs more on the apps than in the restaurants. Why is that? It's just because of the, the percentage that they take, 30%. That's most of our profit that going into their commission, right? I thought we could just mark up the price a little bit, at least make little money, or if you don't do that, then we won't make no money. Wait. What? A 30% cut? 30%? Yeah. That sounds like a lot. It is. And what are you left with? Pretty much nothing. But that's why we, we got to mark up the price. At least we can make something. And for more restaurant owners, 
we hear the apps can take anywhere from 20 to 35 percent. We might not even make any profit. It's very difficult for restaurants to offer 30 percent just for delivery. We make very little, but there is no other choice. Everybody's on them. Like, it's kind of hard not to be on there. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Lots to digest on your marketplace. We're testing the top three food apps, and the results are in. Skip the dishes. Come and get it. I am so happy. Skip is the cheapest when it comes to delivery fees, but it also takes the longest. What's up with that? I might have wasted a bit of time, but I saved some money in the process. Skip tells us several factors may impact delivery time, including courier reassignment, restaurant requests for more order preparation time, and traffic conditions. I hear you. Looks like we have a delivery. Looks like my food's here. <laughs> Pretty sure. Hi. Uber. Yes, Uber. Let's Two go. Two orders from Uber. Uber Eats was the fastest, but at what cost? It's got the highest delivery fees from 350 to 7 bucks. It can make a one item order quite expensive. Uber tells us consumers pay depending on time and distance. And get this, that delivery fee you see on your phone, with some apps, it doesn't go directly to couriers. It goes to the company. If you're ordering for one, that's really expensive. Fedora might not be the app for you. The total is $26.02. Yep, with fees and tip, most of Steph's meals cost that much. If you actually do the math like we just did, then I think it will change your opinion on which apps you should use depending on what you value. Do you think the delivery app should make it more clear when it comes to these additional costs? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I think they should. They probably should. I just like to know exactly what I've made for, right? I'm, I'm lazy. I don't want to look it up. Absolutely, because that way I can make a well informed decision if I want to proceed with paying a few dollars more if I can go get the food myself. We think so too. So we go to the apps for some answers. Uber Eats and Skip won't do an on camera interview, but Fedora steps up. Hi, David. Hi. I'm Makta. David Albert, Managing Director of Fedora Canada. As you know, we tested some food delivery apps. Sure, I've heard. And it turns out that Fedora was the most expensive. OK. What do you think about that? What maybe drove the price to look higher is we, all our restaurants have a minimum order value of $15. That's right. Why do you do that? So it, it's ultimately an economic thing for us. So if you have $14 in your cart, for example, you can choose to pay an extra dollar or add something else to your cart. But aren't you forcing customers to spend more than they intended to spend? We're not forcing customers to spend anything. A business has to charge whatever they have to charge to be able to make money and pay their employees. Sure, make money. But what we question are those hidden markups on the apps. Why not be more transparent about that? So it's a good question. So we ultimately enable the restaurant to dictate the menu price. So about 20% of the restaurants on our platform have a price markup. To your point around transparency, one thing that we're talking a lot about internally, actually, is whether we should have a feature that kind of publicizes this to the customer. Is this something that consumers could look forward to in the next year? Uh, yeah, again, I, I won't make any promises that I can't deliver on, but it's, uh, it's something that we think makes sense to provide more transparency around to the customer. We also talk to a lot of restaurant owners, and they tell us they're kind of forced to mark up their prices because Fedora's commission leaves them with little or no profit at all. The, the restaurant business can be a tough business. The margins are thin. It's, it's, it's high pressure. But the restaurants continue to, to work with us uh, very consistent, consistently, which to me, I think, is the best proxy for whether they can afford to pay the fees. But they almost feel like they have no choice but to work with the food delivery apps. I mean, for us, it ultimately boils down to what we need to charge to also be able to make money. We also asked Skip and Uber Eats about hidden markups. Skip says price differences are uncommon, but do occur. And Uber Eats tells us sometimes restaurants charge a premium to help cover packaging costs for delivery. I was under the assumption I was just paying for the um, delivery. I did not realize that the actual food items themselves were also marked up. So that's a rip off to me. 
Battle of the Food Apps continues. We test the top three food delivery apps, Skip the Dishes, Uber Eats, and Fedora, rating delivery times and revealing hidden markups. But what else are you buying into? Shame, Fedora, shame. Couriers protest. In the UK, France, Italy, China, and Australia. We make their profits for them. It's about falling wages. In 10 hours, you make 34 pounds. 34 pounds. And job security. English is my first language. I feel sorry for the people that it's not their first language. While researching our story on food delivery apps, we get an email from an Uber Eats driver. We have no rights and no voice. You will have my full cooperation as long as I will remain anonymous. She wants us to see what life is really like for the couriers. I'm one of those people you'll say is a working poor person. So we join her for a day on the job. Do you feel like the, the drivers are respected by the company? No. We're not showing her face, using her name or her real voice, because she's scared of losing her job. Why not? Because we're left in the dark about a lot of things. I did it full time in the summer, and it was exhausting and sad because by the end of the day, I realized I was making less than minimum wage after my gas and everything. Fed up, food couriers fight back. Uber Chief! In Canada, Skip the Dishes and Uber face potential class action lawsuits. At the heart of both disputes is that couriers get no guaranteed minimum wage, paid sick days, overtime, or vacation. How to classify couriers is what it boils down to. What do you think about that, the fact that you're labeled an independent contractor versus an employee? I think it's an excuse for them to exploit drivers. That's Aiden McDonald's opinion, too. He's with an injured worker's legal clinic. All of the food delivery apps classify their workers as independent contractors. What is the problem with that? The problem is that when you misclassify a worker as an independent contractor, they don't have access to workers' compensation, they don't have the same access to employment standards and employment insurance. That leaves those workers vulnerable to exploitation. We speak to more couriers, and all of them ask us to hide their identities. They, too, are afraid. They tell us the draw at first was the flexibility. I was studying. I didn't find any job that I could fit into my schedule. So this one was the perfect job. And the potential pay can be promising. I started making a lot more money. But for these two Toronto couriers, everything came to a crashing halt. I collided with him somewhere around here and landed somewhere right about here. I was riding my bicycle in the downtown, and somebody opened a door. So I crashed into the door, and that broke my left hand. Both couriers alerted the apps. They say the response was surprising. I was sad that Uber even didn't ask me, are you OK? Everything is good. Do you need an ambulance? No, nothing like that. They asked if I wore a helmet, if I uh, injured my head, and then if I could finish doing the order. So I told them I couldn't do that. <laughs> what did you think about that? I thought it was so stupid. Um, it made me pretty mad. It's like I'm not even a person. To hear a courier say they don't even feel like a person, does that not show that there's a problem here? So that doesn't make me feel good hearing about that specific instance. So for us, these things are very case specific, but we would never want some, to make somebody finish a job, nor, nor do they have to finish the job if they're hurt on the job. When it comes to workers' compensation, the Fedora courier was covered, but the Uber Eats courier said he was left with nothing. After I realized that I was not gonna have enough money to pay all my bills, I was really stressed. I didn't have enough money to pay my food, to have to save money for everything. Even I have to ask for money from my dad, and that made me feel pretty bad. Uber Eats says it never wants any of its delivery partners to have an experience like that, and it's always looking to improve support. But that doesn't include paying into workers' compensation, because Uber Eats says their couriers are independent contractors. So does Skip and Fedora, but Fedora pays premiums, so why the difference? 
after questioning Ontario's Workers' Compensation Board, the WSIB, we learn that Uber Eats is classified as a telephone answering service. That's like a call center. So that means those on the road are not covered. But Fedora is classified as courier operations. So their couriers are covered. Skip the dishes status is still pending. We feel that it's important that the worker has protection in the event that they're injured on the job. And in speaking to the regulating bodies, it seemed like it was something that we were able to do and, and actually supposed to be doing. We asked the WSIB for an interview to explain they declined, but they do admit that our questions are forcing them to review Uber Eats and the entire food delivery industry. And across the country, coverage of couriers is not much better. How do you feel when you hear that some couriers are getting coverage if they're injured on the job and others are not? It's a fundamental unfairness. There's no rhyme or reason why some people doing the same work should be covered and other people doing the same work should not, not be covered. These couriers feel the same way. I think it's really messed up because the nature of the job, regardless of who you work for, is the same. What happened to me could happen to anyone. I would like to feel secure when I'm doing this job. I'd like to feel that if something happened, I have a backup. We're going to follow this fight and want to hear from you. When picking a food delivery app, what matters most? Take our poll or write us.